I'll get you a hot drink, miss. Oh, I've done some dry clothing. Max, 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 They've got another dipstick stick coming. No, oh, no, they've tried this one before and I'm radial tired of it. Oh, they expect me to change gear now and start sparse, sparse, spark plugging their products. They must be out of their piss, piss, piss heads. I got letters from fan belts who say, Max, you're special, you're unique, you're differential. Yes, yes, I know it's what they want. That's because they're air conditioned to it, to it, to it. To it. Bender it off, call the timing belt again. I mean, who's calling the two, two, tune up? Who's in crew, crew, cruise control here anyway? I like to blow my own gasket, but I have better things to do than to sit here and wax polish lyrical about. I'll tell you who! Me! Me! Max Headlamp! And if they don't like it, they can stick, 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 shift it in their exhaust pipe and choke, choke it! And smoke it! As far as I can tell them. It's showtime. You just remember what I said. Now listen to me. Stay out of our business. You just remember what I said. You just remember what I said. You know who I am? Are you ready, eager young space cadet? I may be a really, really rebel set, your hero ship, sir. Then make way for Garbage Bell Flicks, Garbage Bell Flicks, Garbage Bell Flicks, Garbage Bell Flicks, Well, daylight feels a lot different than the dam, that's for sure. And as you can see, it's three dimensional. Not only is there video up front, but there's video on the sides and out the back as well. Hi, how are you? Video. Use it. Don't abuse it. This message sponsored by Concerned Parents. Oh, there it is. These are freaking nerds. <laughs> action, action. Let's begin this transmission. Episode 16. There it is. There it is. Tough Ninja. Hi, how are you? Returning Monday on Channel 50, Chicago Summertime Plays. Hi, how are you? What's you doing, man? Who you talking Begin to? Begin transmission. Oh, I can't hear you. Welcome, welcome, one, welcome all, once again, to the Garbage Hill Flicks Podcast Show. It's showtime. Show, show. Wu <laughs> Tang, Wu Tang forever. Wu Tang. What month is this? This is uh, June, right? No, July. June? No, July. You know, actually, it could be August. Maybe September. But it's July. It's 4th of July. Oh, okay, yeah, 4th of July, right, yeah. That's why I keep hearing all these explosives going out and then I think something else. Anyway, it could be August. Anywho, it's summertime!
I apologize for the faulty signal. This episode might be a little bit uh, shaky. Choppy, wibbly wobbly. We had to relocate from our bunker and up high into the skies of this satellite moon tower structure thing. Fuck your face. So yeah, the signal might be a little bit uh off. Garbage pill flicks podcast. Hashtag fuck your face. Is back on the attack. Action. It's summertime. This episode is action packed front to back. What we have tonight, ki- what do we have tonight, kids? Well, we got some action. Today, the word of the day is action. 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 The GPF podcast show is all the action that you need for the summer days and the summer blockbusters. And so let's just get into this and dive face first into the junk pile, shall we? Hot racks thrown in for free. Junk pile. Oh, no, 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 it's not Ninja November, but any time is a good time to watch and discuss a ninja movie, right? So we have some uh, ninja movies to discuss and some other ninja-type things and action, action, action. Tough Ninja, the Shadow Warrior, a tale of ninja powers turned to evil. Now the mission begins. Go and do my bidding. You are a criminal, traitor of our ninja teacher, Shogi. You must die. Shogi was an old fool. A movie called City Ninja. A.K.A. Shitty Ninja. Or A.K.A. Tough Ninja, Shadow of the Warrior. However you can find this. It's a neon video release VHS. Stay out of our business. Ninja movies from the 80s are just some of the best cinema created, in my humble opinion, humble host opinion. And even better when the VHS cover looks nothing like what the film has to do with it. In this case, Shitty Ninja. I mean, um, City Ninja. 1988. He places it at 85, 86, 87. Between 85 and 88, this came out. Which has a Rambo type beefcake on the cover with guns and fun. And also ninjas on the cover as well, joining the uh, Rambo type guy. City Ninja. Ninja, the Shadow Warrior. Evil mastermind Ben perverts the magical power of the warrior wizards by training a gang of ninja in the techniques of ninjutsu. Fighting against Ben's brainwashing, Judy, Lily, and Johnny escape from Ben's training camp using magical powers of invisibility and the thousand ways of the ninja warrior wizards. They're not just ninjas, they're ninja warrior wizards in this motherfucker. When Ben finds out about the escapees, he is furious and orders them to be found dead or alive. Anyone who betrays me must suffer the consequences. A dead... That's a ninja. A death duel using the deadly skills and weapons of the ninja bring this high action film to its exciting climax. And oh, oh. Tough ninja. Made in the USA. Who the hell was that? Who the hell was that? I realize there's a number of ninja flicks out there that have similar titles to City Ninja. So if you search for City Ninja, good luck. <laughs> All are very different. Which is just fucking awesome. I recall as a little chucker, you know, Halloween came around and... And if my hazy memory uh, serves me correctly, if I am not mistaken, it was 87 or 88 when the... Those were the 87, 88 were the years when the uh, ninja costume was the hot, hot Halloween costume of 88 or 87. Maybe 86. It was in the 80s, though. That's a ninja. Pawns in a horrifying conspiracy for power and wealth. What? City Ninja. Glorious. In its own right, 
even though you may or may not find the same City Ninja, they're probably all really good City Ninja movies. I can't just I just can't decide what's better. The cover of this movie or the actual movie both get a five out of five Ninja throwing stars. The Russian roulette of ninja flicks. City ninja. Shitty ninja. Shitty ninja. Oh. Taxi! What? One ninja isn't enough? And our second ninja flick is one that I still have not watched, and I'm waiting until Ninja November to do this, as promised. Anyone who betrays me must suffer the consequences. This comes from a request from Carl! Carl out at uh, Carl's Collectibles in Sherman, Illinois. It is titled Ninja in Action. Also from 1986 or 87. Yeah. Mm hmm. Teach them a lesson. Where's our lunch? When an American businessman is robbed of valuable jewelry. Jewelry. Jewel, jewelry. Then brutally murdered. So they took his jewelry and then they murdered him in Hong Kong. Don't kill his daughter Tina, Christine O'Hara, and her lover Rex, Stuart Steen. Vow to bring the killers to justice or die trying. It's beautiful. A murky trail of clues lead to the vicious ninja crime syndicate led by the sinister Mr. X, Louis Roth. What? Huh? I and his cohort, the notorious jewel thief, Alan Coe. Kent Poon. His name is Kent. Poon, that is the actor who plays the thief, Alan Coe, portrayed by Kent Poon. Yeah. Poon! Mm -hmm. Hey, what's that? Where's our lunch? Two of the most cold-blooded criminals in Hong Kong, Poon and Mr. X. Hey. That's a ninja. The danger increases as Tina and Rex descend into the lurid depths of the violent Hong Kong underworld in search of the evidence that will bring Mr. X and his crime syndicate down. Bring down the poon. Taxi! But they've got to move fast or the evil Mr. X will see that their quest for justice ends in a funeral for both of them. Where's our luggage? Hey, you! Don't kill him! Set amidst the exotic, mysterious beauty of the Orient, ninja in action, pulse-pounding suspense and breathtaking excitement builds to a conclusion so intense and so shocking, it will leave you stunned. What? Huh? I and I am stunned from just reading the back of this. That's a ninja. Glorious VHS. Ninja in action. N-I-A. What the hell was that? Wow. Whoa. 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 Where's our lunch? Oh, yeah. Let's go. Hey, you. Don't move. What the hell was that? But we're starving. Well, now talk about exciting. Take a look at this. Thank you, Hank, for the action election. Let it be known the doomers and the warriors on command shall put you into the darkness where there shall never, ever be a return. Demolition! This weekend, get ready for battle because the Legion of Doom and the Ultimate Warrior are coming to fight. Oh, what a run! Looks like it's alive. People eat it, you know, and throw it, but I make it dance. Me. Have you ever electrocuted it? Never. It'll talk. That? Wow. Is hydrogen. It's a steam engine? 
Sure. Uh, I told you I was doing a serious scientific experiment. Oh. Why is the ball spinning? I don't know. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, boy. What does it all mean? Find out from Mr. Wizard on Nickelodeon. Guess who's coming to the A-Team? Boy, George. And the Culture Club. And the action is too marvelous for words. So get in on the act, because things are going to be rocking. And stomping. What next? When Boy George meets the A-Team, Tuesday. I'm rolling. Aren't tampons hard to use? Not really. Let, Let us do, do your, your dirty work. work. Good. Do it. With deep, penetrating action that gets... It all depends on the odors you've got. We'll return in a moment. Friday night, 8 p.m., Santa Fe Speedway gets wet and wild as the Outlaw Mud Racers Thunder National plus Monster Truck blows into town for one night only. Three divisions of Mud Racers, Destroyer 2, Insanity, The Witch, Wild One, and more. Plus a car-crushing exhibition by Steve Hess's national champion Monster Truck, Nightmare. The Outlaw Mud Racers Thunder National plus Monster Truck. This Friday night, 8 p.m., $4 for kids. Santa Fe Speedway Hotline, 708-839-1050. Tickets at the gate or Ticketmaster. Santa Fe Speedway, 9100 South Wolf Road. For all your printing needs, all your media, LittleMonstersPrinting.com. Nick, 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 Bill and Sebastian and <laughs> Turkey TV have taken off for the day to make way for more mousing around as the Super Saturday Danger Mouse Marathon continues. This hour, when Tenfold gets superpowers, then they leave London for America where buildings are disappearing. Ooh, so hang on to your house instead of back for the mouse. Danger Mouse! Globs. Globs? Globs. Globs. Is it wet? Nope, it's dry. This bud's for you. This bud's for you. Wrap a roll. When a man eats a friend's goldfish, when a dog owner takes a real bath, Judge Wapner has to settle the case. Listen to that. <laughs> yes, it's important to go out and see the real world and look beyond. You know who I am? <laughs> Is your collection piling up? Do you have naked VHS tape? Sure we all do! Yeah. That was my problem. Once upon a time I had tapes that had no covers. Yeah. Videoforce.ca Videoforce.ca No one likes naked yeah. tapes. Videoforce Hit him up! Your tapes aren't naked anymore. VHS tapes? Find them on Instagram. Well, they got you covered. They're good and funny. <laughs> What's so funny? It's just another violent storm, and I had to call us concerning it? The story of courage, honor, and love continues as the saga of a young boy and his horse returns. Weeknights at 10.30. Oh! A private investigator with all the right moves. It's terrific, sweetheart. And a success rate that is... Simply set. Tom Selleck is Magnum. Weeknights at 10.30 on Channel 9. Ah! It's a rerun! Wish I had my sunglasses. Better help. Hulkamania's gonna run wild! And no one can stop this five-man tag team! He's too dwarf to you. Alright, gentlemen, it's that. It's that out. He didn't save my life, I saved his life! Rough, tough, non-stop action! End of the line, Smith! With the A-Team and Hulk Hogan. Oh, I love it! Some of the week, Tuesday on 10. And there's much more. Now, ladies and germs, it's time for... Movies you never knew Bobcat Goldthwait was in. You got a name. What do they call you? Number 68, Grind from 2003, is an early 2000s skateboarding flick featuring a creeptastic Bobcat Goldthwait as a motel manager in a cameo complete with Daisy Duke shorts. I, I, just, I just saw that. I just saw that face. But I kind of spruced it up, you know? Caged squirrels. <laughs> when I saw 
Oh, baby, I had no taste. I couldn't get a job. I couldn't eat meat. In a smaller shirt than he ought to be wearing that reads Heavy Metal Rules. Ah, what kind of music do you like? You like salsa? You like reggae? Soap with that love thing? Outstanding as always. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't take the class. I'm on about two and a half. This was Movies You Never Knew Bobcat Goldthwait was in. It's a good American name. Don't make me fly my nostrils. I wrote my first album and go something like this. Sat will return after these messages. Sunday night at 6.30 on Channel 9. Hey, this buzz for you. Why you were in Piper's pit, and I can't believe it, I'm sitting here with the greatest wrestling manager of all time, Captain Lou Albano, and uh, Captain, I ain't never had nobody make no phone calls, what you doing, man, who you talking to, the president, what you doing, oh, I can't hear you. Roddy with the Worldwide Wrestling Federation Action Hotline, listening right here, talking about Roddy Piper, who, now, 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 they're wait, talking wait. about Captain Lou Albano, they're talking about the Samoans. Just a second, what's the number, what's the number, let me call the number. You know, did you ever think, you know, whatever happened to these, like, 1-800, 1 1-900, 1 or actually, yeah, 1-900, or the 976? I remember 976-3636. What's the number? What's the number? Let me call the number! You know, I wonder if we called them, like, now, you know, give them a call right now and see if they're actually, uh... What's the number? What's the number? Let me call the number! Um, I'm gonna call the Captain Lou hotline right now. It's Most of these are probably just dis disconnected anyway, so... Be, uh, nine, seven, six, six, three, six, three. It was, uh, it was nine, seven, six, three, six, three, six was the other one. Uh, never mind. Y'all don't know anything about that. Get ready, because it's coming on the 31st. Hello? Goblins, ghosts, Hi, and witches. Hello? We got it all. Cap Come on down. Captain, Captain Lou? To the Kent Pharmacy what? on Route uh. 52 in Kent, New York. <laughs> We've got hairnets, we've got sprays, Wait, what? we've got cosmetics, we've got prescription drugs, we've Whoa. got it all together, we've got masks, we've got swords, okay. we've got costumes for all occasions. Anything all right, right on, Captain Lou. Some. Now come on down, remember the name, Kent Pharmacy. Also, during the month of October, we've got outrageous uh. sales, 20 to 50% off on selected gifts and merchandising. Remember, I'm Captain Lou, and I'm talking to you about the Kent <laughs> Pharmacy, the finest pharmaceutical outlet in the entire area. It's Captain Lou telling you to come on in, browse around, check All right, the right on, Captain Lou. I want you to meet the fine staff. Remember, Wait, Captain what? Lou, talking about the Kent Pharmacy, Route 52, Kent, New York. Kent Pharmacy, remember that name. All right, well, I guess it did, I guess it worked, sort of. I don't know Rest in peace really to the uh, 976-1900 hotlines. It's a relic of the past. Report at 10. Gives 100% of what you need. 100%, 100% of the time. Last 30% longer. We think you'll agree when it comes to the right price and performance. It's the right place at the right time when the right day is a state of mind. It's a feeling that's all around. The silver bullet wants for you down. So come on, in the core is like it's the right beer now. Milk. It does a body good. Next, Miami Vice goes Wild West. And that's no bull sauce. What is going on here? Miami Vice. <laughs> this gets better and better. Then. You may be able to help solve a mystery. Fugitive lovers. Ritualistic kings. Join Robert Stack to find the missing pieces on Unsolved Mysteries next. This is Showtime. And here's what's coming next. It's animated adventure. Venture into the tape yard. <laughs> Whoa. Boom, dude. The VHS. Tape Yard. Mostly unsolved mysteries. You'll hear two of the comic movie hit of the season. Bill Cosby meets the maniacal Medusa. Will she take over the world? 
Or will the devil may care bon vivant Bill Cosby save the day and still make an 8 o'clock dinner reservation? That's all there is for dinner, Leonard. No coffee. See the world's favorite funny man, Bill Cosby, in Leonard Part 6, an adventure in comedy. Rated PG. Leonard Part 6 starts Friday at select theaters. Cosby. Take care, bon vivant, Bill, Bill Cosby. One, two, three, four, five, five, five. Bill Cosby in Leonard, part six. Hey, what are you smiling about? Aww. Little Jello pudding pop. What's that, Bill Cosby? That's right. Bill Cosby. So, while your right hand is doing this, your left hand can be doing this or this or, you know. Made with real pudding. Frozen pudding on a stick. And for always letting us lick the spoon after she mixes it. Leonard Part 6, 1987. This is the only one movie, Leonard Part 6. There is not five movies prior to this. You would think there would be with it being called Letter Part 6, but there is no, no other movies except for this. The Jell-O pudding-eating <clears throat> motherfucker? Now! So right out the gate, I'm confused, because there's only one Leonard Part 6. Not 5, not Leonard Part 3, not Leonard Part 4, none of those. Just, just Part 6. One, two, three, four, five, five, five! because she knows that this is made with real pudding. Other fellow podcasters tell me uh, to stay away from this movie. Uh, but I guess I'm or I just love trash. It's Bill Cosby coming at you with music and fun, and if you're not careful, uh, you may learn something before it's done. So let's get ready, okay? I believe the Video Rangers uh, had uh, reviewed this movie in the past from what I've heard from the VHS Bandits, who uh, actually warned me personally to quote, uh, it's legit garbage, and prepare to be disappointed. Um, of course, thanks for the warning, video, uh, video VHS bandits, but, uh, you know, we like trash around here, and I found this VHS copy. Surprisingly, I found this copy, and, uh, let's read the back of it, shall we? <laughs> That's right, and you know what else? I would like to tell you a story. I have five. <laughs> In Leonard, Part 6, An Adventure in Comedy. Catch him. The in inimitable Bill Cosby? Yes, that Bill Cosby is on a madcap mission to save his marriage, his daughter's reputation, and the world in the imaginative misadventure Leonard, Part 6. Leonard Parker Cosby, a former secret agent turned Bon Viant restauranteur is enlisted to stop the evil Medusa Johnson, Gloria Foster, from destroying the world with her vast army of killer frogs, lobsters, and horses. That's right! And you know wow. what else? It's a tough assignment for the top-notch agent, but this... but his troubles don't end there. Parker's trying to win back his ex-wife who dumped him seven years ago, and his daughter's about to marry a man who's old enough to be her fa grandfather. <laughs> But have no fear, whether it's an international crisis or domestic dilemma, it's all in a day's work for Leonard in this wild and wacky comedy for Bill Cosby fans of all ages. Now that's a, a bold statement, because I'm not sure how many Bill Cosby fans are left. Now! It's not funny. This movie is not funny at all, and just, it was hard to watch. And I've watched some shit in my day. So this was uh, this was a, a, an endurance trial to sit through uh, Bill Cosby and Leonard Part Six. But if your left hand sees how much fun your right hand is having, it won't want to be left out. Bill Cosby. I said, what did you do? They let you know that Bill Cosby's in this movie in the trailer. I think they say his name three times in one TV spot. Three times. Bill Cosby. They want you to know Bill Cosby is in this movie. Bill Cosby. <laughs> Bill Cosby, 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 Bill Cosby
Shit. <laughs> and you might be saying, hey, Shuck, guess what? I liked picture pages and Fan Albert. So, you know, I thought Bill Cosby was funny. Well, you know what? Even so, you're not going to find this movie funny. This movie fucking sucks. Tell Bill, I said have a Coke and a smile and shut the fuck up. That's what I'm talking about. You cannot say fuck. What the fuck, Bill Cosby? What the fuck does that even mean? Fuck. Fuck. Fuck you. Camille. He goes, hello, suck this and MF and kiss my big black stuff and suck it and stick it down in your mouth and suck it, suck it. Is that it's? Uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, uh, trailers, you know, before the VHS tape. I mean, there were some decent trailers on here. There was uh, Punchline, the dramedy from '87, uh, with uh, Sally Field and Tom Hanks, uh, which went on to be Forrest Gump and Mama, uh, and this, um, and a Pippi Longstocking movie, which reminds me, I probably should have watched the Pippi Longstocking movie with my girlfriend and skipped. This Leonard Part Six bullshit. Uh, so yeah, those were the, the the trailers before Leonard Part Six, which were better than the movie. Uh, I, I almost turned this movie off twice. I I really couldn't get through it. It was uh, it was boring and it wasn't funny and it was confusing. Uh, the beginning starts out with hey, um. Motherfucker, dick pussy's not and shit. Good night. Good night. Suck my dick. Bye bye. We're just like thrown into title credits with to have like kids drawn animals, uh, giraffes and, and hippos and lions and tigers and frogs and you know all this and it looks like something out of picture pages I guess. Uh, so and then we're into this uh, movie of looks like some kind of action movie uh, with a guy in a frog diver suit and killer fish yellow and gelatin pops they taste just like jello gelatin bill cosby owns a restaurant uh after we see him on an ostrich and dancing and then there's like a voiceover of some british guy trying to i guess explain who leonard is leonard part six is he's supposed to be some i guess 007 type uh secret agent man uh once upon a time, there was a man named Leonard Parker. He owned a very expensive restaurant, drove a very expensive car, and lived in a very expensive house. Then, in the middle of one very normal day, the president picked him... We need you, Leonard. ...to save the world again. But I have nothing to wear. Can a perfectly regular guy... Come on, Leonard, can't you get it up? Armed only with your average combat Porsche, underarm heat-seeking missiles, and a foreign fortune teller, save all of mankind. And still make an 8 o'clock dinner reservation. That's all there is for dinner, Leonard. No coffee. He's no Bruce Wayne and no Batman. I would like to talk to you. Give you the old evil eye, like villain person goes by medusa so medusa is going to she has something that controls animals and she's going to control the animals and put out a terrorist attack of animals and onto the world and the government is bringing leonard back from his restaurant he runs a restaurant so they're going to take him from his restaurant there's a big shoot out in the beginning which is some action and then there's no action until the end so there's a big shoot out at the beginning in the restaurant to get leonard part six to come back and stop this medusa Do you watch the bill cosby show and then there's some cosby show type of side story where his ex-wife he's trying to win her back because he cheated on her Big surprise, Bill Cosby cheating on his wife. But he cheated on his wife with a 19-year-old. And on top of that, his daughter is dating a 50-year-old professor that is her teacher in college. I can't make this up. This is, this is, this is what the movie is. It's ridiculous. It's boring. It's like a Cosby episode, but with an action thing. Like if... Cliff Huxtable was like a 007 secret double agent, I guess. Do you watch the Bill Cosby show? Aww. 
there's a scene where he talks to a fortune teller that he visits in a trailer park who speaks gibberish and refer he refers to her as the nurse and she just like slaps and yells at him in gibberish for like 10 minutes and like kids are watching and laughing as they're like slapping him it, it doesn't make any sense sometimes or I'm just really freaking high does this even count as an action movie? <laughs> In front of people. Fuck Leonard Part 6, and why do they even st Don't call it Leonard Part 6 when there's only one fucking movie. One, two, three, four, that five, is just five, deceiving. Five. Not that I want to see fucking six full movies with fucking Bill Cosby trying to be an action hero. Fuck. Oh, oh. oh fuck you. Filth, flying, 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 filth. Put fucking a bunch of fucking zebras and exotic animals and anteaters and shit in a fucking... Huxtable fucking movie? Suck my dick. This, mo this movie has no redeeming qualities. I can't find anything good about it. He looks like a re uh, reject Power Ranger. And his helmet says Ipso Facto. What does that mean? And in the beginning and towards the end, he's riding an ostrich. Filth, flying, and you know... Cosby. That sums this movie up very well. A big ostrich shit egg. That's what this movie is. An egg of ostrich shit. You know what? How about this? Since we care so much here at the Garbage Pail Flicks Cop Podcast, I'm going to give you like 10 titles to watch instead of Leonard, Leonard Part 6. Monday for a ticket! I have to give him Monday for a ticket! Ninja Turtles 3. The Garbage Pail Kids movie. Howard the Duck. If you really want to keep your Bill Cosby intact, uh, there's Meteor Man, which he makes an appearance in. A cameo in Meteor Man. Find a bootleg of the Fantastic Four movie from the 1990s. Police Academy 7, Mission to Moscow. Nuki. Mac and Me. And finally, the Super Mario Brothers movie with Bob Hoskins and John Leguizamo. There's a world of things to discover out there. To see live in person instead of your living room. So, uh, where, where are you from? It does. It does. It does make a difference. It does make a difference. That's, That's what this country's all about. Taking it to the edge. Laying it all on the line. I watch your tail. You watch mine. I value human life. Hey, we're all on the same side. DJ Hooker. He's with you. Tyson Gourmet Dinners. Cause you and me, we're two of a kind. The kind of dinners you just might not cook yourself. We're yum, just family, yum, yum, you yum, and yum. yum. Tyson. Eating you yum, is good, yum, as good as good can be. Even if you're eating alone, at Tyson we cook every dinner as if you were eating with our family. Tyson's feeding you like family. Tyson's the only thing you're going to get to taste is the windshield. Creating. Creating is a way of making your mark. Some people paint. Others make music. All right. Still others make art with their body. What happened here? Eat Here invites all hard-working Americans to rub it in. Rub it in, rub it in. Rub it in, rub it in. Confident, dry and secure. Raise your hand, raise your hand if you're sure. Raise your hand, raise your hand if you're sure. Summer just wouldn't be summer without some summertime fun. Exactamundo, dude. The Jetsons show you the future of fun at 2.30, while the Flintstones rock the Stone Age at 3. 
won't want to miss a moment of merry melodies when Bugs Bunny and friends take over at 3.30. Then those magnificent mutant martial artists, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, kick out the jams at 4. Two hours of stoking steam and summertime fun. Today from 2.30 to 4.30 on the 50 Kids Club, Chicago's summertime place. Check, check, check. Today on check, Garbage check, Pail check. Flicks, we have a special guest. Yep, we have guest via satellite. We've got to tune this in here and see what we can do to get this uh, tuned in. Can you, uh, can you hear me? What is going on, Garbage Pail Flicks fans? My name is Fatal Raps, and I'm here with your host, Chuck Balsack, to talk about the greatest heroes in history, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Hey, look at this. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Fatal. Can you hear me, buddy? All right, dude. Today on Garbage Pit GPF Podcast Show. I understand you're a writer of music and creator of all visual things. Uh, but you also, you're a big, big fan of the Ninja Turtles, as I am myself. Not only are the Turtles a big part of my life, influencing me while I was growing up, but I always say I became one, from the 90s hip-hop to the love for pizza and then even the meditation. Totally radical cowabunga, dude. What was your first memory or earliest memory of the Turtles? When it comes to my earliest memories of the Ninja Turtles, there's a couple of things that really stand out. One is a picture that my grandmother showed me. It's just me in my Ninja Turtles underwear, and I'm wearing my red Raphael mask that had the nose attached and a pair of size. And she said I came to breakfast every day that week like that because I was so excited that my grandfather was getting me a bootleg copy of the Coming Out of Our Shells tour. I don't know if everyone knows, but back then, bootleg VHS wasn't on every single corner for you to just pick it up, so that was a big deal. Live October 3rd in concert on pay-per-view cable TV. It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and the Coming Out of Their Shells Tour. Parents, treat your kids to the musical show created just for them. It's anti-drugs, anti-crime, and totally fun. Order Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Coming Out of Their Shells Tour, at home on pay-per-view October 3rd with weekend replays. Live October 3rd on Request Television. Check, check, check. Awesome. For our turtle heads out there, uh, my earliest memory was of the comic books, the Archie comic books that I used to grab uh, from the local comic collector store. I do recall ordering a t-shirt of Michelangelo uh, on a skateboard, and I ordered it out of the back of a Ninja Turtle comic book. And I had to wait like a month for that shirt, and I wore the <laughs> shit out of it. Michelangelo to the rescue in the party wagon. Almost as much as my Batman, 1989 Batman shirt. Ninja the rat, top and each the ninja arm. Donatello, master of the staff. Leonardo, the katana blade. My God. Raphael, the sony. Run is an Michelangelo, the new shackles. Radical uh, and master of the willing pizza. Hey, who had the pepperoni and ice cream? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Who's always hopping for action? Another thing that still sticks with me today is the love for going garage sailing. When I was a kid, I wasn't looking for bargains or strange things like that. But I always wanted to go with my ma because every single garage sale had Ninja Turtle stuff for cheap all the time so i used to come home with so much cool stuff and it was never a problem because it was 50 cents to a dollar instead of trying to buy it brand new at the store we'll show these hairballs how to party the toys of course followed by the cartoons in the film great for displaying turtles when they're not eating pizza another thing that i will never forget and it's not even ninja turtle but it was at the beginning of all of them is the intro to the Burger King Kids Club, where the animator draws the cartoon, they steal his Whopper, then he crawls out of the film to steal the editor's Whopper, and then the editor snatches it back. That sound, all of that, 
it will always stick in my head because I watched so many of those VHSs over and over and over. Anyone for Turtle Soup? All right, here's a fun flicks fact. The BK Kids Club commercial that you mentioned is actually a promo on the BK VHS copies of the cartoon that came from Burger King once upon a time. And if you look on these tapes, they have that commercial on there. The voice of the Crypt Keeper, John Cashier, is the editor in the commercial. I don't know. What a shot. Yeah, right? Crazy. Now, you can have your very own Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Attack! By collecting fun-filled, action-packed video adventures from Family Home Entertainment. Turtles don't know the meaning of the word defeat. That's right! What is Fatal Raps? What is your favorite incarnation of the Ninja Turtles? When it comes to my favorite version of the Turtles, it's really hard. It makes me have a debate in my head. The cartoon, live action, rock band. Because, of course, the way that I first met the Turtles was cartoons and comic books. Now granted, the comic books were a lot darker and different, but nobody was really checking them at the time since they saw the cartoons, they looked very kid friendly, so anytime I told my mom, oh I want this Ninja Turtle comic book, it was never a problem, and then you would get to the dark stories and the dark animation and the different versions. I remember being a kid wondering why they were wearing all red until I really got into the lore and started digging into the information about the turtles. We never bothered to look it up in the dictionary. first. The band is a really tough one not to pick. Just because I remember how excited I was, I still get that excitement when I watch the Coming Out of Our Shells tour, sing the songs with them. You know, I catch myself walking around singing Pizza Power like people sing what's on the radio. So it really had a big impact on me. One that people don't talk about enough is the video game versions. You know, I remember talking with Shuck a while back and he was just asking what my comfort video game or the main one I would go play on Nintendo is. And I told him it was that first Ninja Turtles game and he looked at me crazy like, why is that a comfort game to you? It was so hard and it was just, you know, not one that people go to to have fun. It was a battle. And I was like, I know that. But my thought is I was never even worried about beating the game. It was just so exciting to be controlling a Ninja Turtle and checking out the different levels and the, the adrenaline you get trying to defuse bombs underwater and avoid tanks when you're running down the, the, I guess it's a sidewalk, it looks like concrete blocks trying to get to the next sewer. It's just a lot of fun. Even if you don't beat the game, that one still has a lot of fun. It's Heroes in a Half Shell. A turtle-rific blast of fun. That brings me to my final choice which has to be the movies, at least the first two. You know, the other ones are fun, but the live action, especially the way the first two touched on the emotions, the way they made you laugh and brought you into the story. It really had you concerned for things. The music was awesome and the characters were amazing. Of course, Jim Henson came in and worked on that and you could see the difference when they didn't bring him back, which was awful. But the look of the first two movies the energy of them, and just the overall stories has to make those my favorite. I know a lot of people say the other movies weren't so great, they fell off all the way up to the Michael Bay, but you could say the same thing about the cartoon. They made a whole bunch of different versions of that that weren't as great. They actually made one that was pretty good, but still the original's the best. And they even made another live-action show, which was terrible. Now you can take the hippest film of the year home for keeps. Awesome! Because Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the movie is on video cassette for just $24.99. Righteous! And it only gets better because each video comes with coupons for over $20 worth of food and drinks from Pizza Hut. I love being a turtle! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the movie. Cowabunga! Get them while they're hot. Available at Kmart. I was at the film opening night, the first film in 1990, and it was one of the longest lines I ever stood in to see a movie. And even as a junior high kid, you know, me and my friends, you know, were all ready to see Ninja Turtles, and the strangest thing happened was in the middle of the movie, I want to say it was the first scene when they were about to come out. I'm not sure if it was a joke or a projectionist was a new guy, 
but the movie went out in the middle of the first showing and we almost rioted it was like a riot almost of kids and they finally got they might got the movie back on pretty quick but that was crazy the movie went out and everybody was like cheering in the theater like yeah they was it was uh, it was pretty a pretty awesome memorable experience Biggest memory that I have of Ninja Turtles from when I was young had to be about seven years old, maybe. It was for the second movie. We were at the theater, and of course, everybody showed up early. All the kids were in all their Ninja Turtle gear, and we were all excited, having fun with each other, even though we didn't know each other. And I'm pretty sure it was the parents, not the theater, but I have no idea at this time. But since we were there so early, there was a whole bunch of pizza ordered. And the pizza guys just came in. It was probably four of them with stacks of pizza and set them out in the lobby. And being that it was like 91, 92, the movie theater was just happy about all the excitement. They didn't care about us bringing in extra food. And it was just a bunch of kids that were so excited for Ninja Turtles, having pizza before the movie, high-fiving and doing our karate moves in the lobby. The friends of the Ninja Turtles, you Yusaki Yojimbo, the Samurai Rabbit. Casey Jones, the Sports Warrior, and Metalhead, the Robotic Turtle Vending Machine. Destroy them! Shell, yeah! It's been a fun segment. Thanks for coming. Yep, there we go. Fatal? <coughs> I'd like to end it off with yeah. some trivia that we came across about the infamous Fifth Turtle. So this is a tricky one for all the pizza points and all the pizza power. What was that fifth turtle's name? Yes, looking at you, kid. Is what is the fifth turtle's name? And he gave me the hint too. It is not Venus de Milo from that terrible live action show. So the options are Dominic Van Gogh, Kirby, Sal Picasso, and Sheldon Warhol. And although the meme where Picasso is the fifth turtle is hilarious, I know this answer. The correct answer is Kirby. There were thoughts of making him an evil turtle, the long lost turtle. Not sure why they settled on that name. I know the origin where they got it from, but I believe they could have picked something much better if there was going to be a fifth turtle. Pizza power, bruh. Ultra cool adults. Share the excitement and laughter as Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael, and Michelangelo dice villains, slice pizza, and hurl one liners in rapid succession. Hold the phone! I think we're all on the same side! Okay, Garbage Pail Flicks fans, I've had a blast here talking with Shuck about the Ninja Turtles. Thank you so much for having me. I want to let you know again that my name is Fatal Raps. I got a new album coming out August 6th. It's called Back to 85 because 1985 is my year and For Real is my crew. Check me out at www.ph, the number 8, L, R-A-P-S dot com. That's www.fatalraps.com. Peace. You got some green there? All right. I have some green for talking about the turtles. I have some green. Don't mind if I do. Transmission's out. It's done. All right. Thank you. Thanks. And check him out. Yeah, check out all his... Uh, we'll put a link in the description here for his uh, music and... Uh, Kid like substances. The facts at five on Chicago's very own. Everybody out there giving it all they've got every day. This bud's for you. Then we grew trees. Old people here. <laughs> yeah, thanks to Sam's Yellow Pages ad and my green thumb, we've grown something we can really be proud of. <laughs> you mean the new orchard out back? <laughs> Come on, you can find the time. And if you're worried about missing anything, just do what I do. Record everything. What's that? Do you have insurance on this car? No. It must be Eagle Man. I've got something.
For you. For you. Looking for me? <laughs> oh, look at those low rates. You know, I'd love to see this sucker tackle one of Priscilla's spaghetti dinners. The werewolf problem is real. Some guys think it's sexy when they take it off. But I like it when they put it on. And without further ado, some shout outs. The VHS Surfer on YouTube. Every few months they put out a video highlighting video collectors, VHS collectors of the sort. And there's a rumor that yours truly, Chuck Balzac, is part of one of the episodes. I do like me some VHS tapes. The VHS Surfer. Also on the YouTube channels. Check out the Marijuana VHS Kid. That guy is going on some crazy journeys because he's half Sasquatch and half alien. And you can follow along with his adventures. Marijuana VHS TV over on YouTube. The Strange Tape Strange Show. Every well, few months on, on check out YouTube. The Strange Tape Strange Show. Strange Tapes with all the VHS weirdness and goodness that you can expect from Strange Tapes. If you're familiar with their zine that they put out, you should check out the new issue number nine and find that find information on that on his social media. Pretty gnarly interview with Janice Underground Click. Underground Janice Click. And speaking of Janice Click creator of McMurder is coming back with a new horror shot on video weird tale entitled The Scarecrow from Mars. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Do we have a trailer for that? We got a trailer for that. Take a listen to this trailer. I don't know if it'll do it much justice, but here you go. Old retro commercials from the 80s and 90s and beyond. Hit up Dave's Archives. We are big fans of Dave's Archives. Retro commercials. So you can tune in and trash out. You know, let's face it. Your vision is one of the most important things you've got. And it's important to look after the old eyes. You know, the origin of the word vision is video. And video plays a pretty important part in looking after your two cameras. So every now and then, this reminder to turn off the video. Go out and see what the real world has to offer. You know, I don't want to sound like a queer or nothing, but I'm really going to miss you guys when the show's over. You're special. You're unique. You're differential. That old car is worth money. Call Victory Auto Wreckers at 860-2000 for a quote. Victory will buy, no matter what condition your car is in. Victory will tow it away free, and you'll get cash on the spot. Danger Mouse's greatest cases will continue. Well, well, Frankie the Finn and my old pal Sharky. What's up, fellas? Your time, sugar bear. We're cruising for a crime. Just in the action. Yes, yes, I know it's what they want. <laughs> that didn't hurt. That didn't hurt. You know it. You feel kind of insecure. Well, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> Hi, Maga! Alright! Whoa! 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 Where does the time go? Time for the GPF podcast to come to yet another closing. I know. I'm sorry. I know. I know. I know. I know. I, I enjoy this time too, but we must go. Now you're more Moving on. I want to thank my special guest. Fatal Cuts, Fatal, PH8L. Listen to his music, find it on the interwebs, and out in outer space.
on the airwaves, broadcasting where he broadcasts his fatal things. Garbage Pail Flicks, and uh, oh yeah, on Twitch. Check us out on Twitch. We do Twitch live streams. Check us out on YouTube as well. We broadcast on YouTube, retro commercials, and all kinds of craziness that Garbage Pail Flicks likes to play with. That we like to dabble in. A little bit of voodoo of the retro. Voodoo from the past. Cause he's raising mushrooms in his basement. Garbage Pail Flicks, Garbage Pail Flicks. On YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Podbean, and other platforms of broadcasting, podcasting. And I'm also on the IGs and the FBs. Werewolf of Berwyn. Mixes and uh, VHS fun, you know, just check it out. We got visuals too, even though we do the podcast every month. And it's a listening experience. We also like to dabble with the videos, so go and check out the videos. Why am I starting to start to talk like the Cosby because I'm watching letter part six? Ah, I'm being possessed by the Cosby, oh god. Right. No! And the audio on these things are absolutely amazing. on the airwaves. Anyway, the signal's fading. <laughs> Until next month. <laughs> Same junk time. <laughs> Same trash channel. <laughs> and transmission. And the transmission, dude. End it. Just cut it off. Cut it. Stop. Your authentic recordings of the unknown. I go. I go. I go. I go. You may help uncover the mystery. Whoa. Trader Vicks. His hair was perfect. The Garbage Pail Flicks podcast now has a Patreon. www.patreon.com forward slash Garbage Pail Flicks F L I X. Please donate to our Patreon, get a free sticker, and some other cool stuff and freebies. Go check it out. Creating. And we'll also give you a shout out right here on our show. Shout out to our founding Patreon member, Reefer Vision TV, Scott Ian Von Frankenstein. Thanks for being our founding founder Patreon, the person who kicked it off. Smoke it! Punk and weird, fun, garbage pail flicks type stuff. You know how the show goes, so just imagine what we offer on our Patreon. Patreon.com, garbage pail flicks, F L I X. Smoke it! <laughs>